Today in Testify, we feature Mary Muthiani, who is an entrepreneur, a preacher of the Word of God and a mother of two children. I was five years married to James and we met in college, um, you know, uh, many years ago. <laughs> yeah, we met in college and, uh, well, in college we were friends. I wouldn't say that we had anything. We were just some very good friends. And, uh, of course, you know, serving God in college, you know, uh, we, were born, we were both born again you know, doing missions together. But then I never knew that he could be my future husband. So after college, that's when, you know, the relationship moved from being friends to, you know, wanting to spend the rest of our lives together. Yeah, he was a wonderful person. James loved God. He was a pastor, you know, he was a business person. And the most important thing is that he was really committed, not only to God, but to, to his family, to I, the children, and our relationship. And um, He's a person I was looking forward, you know, to living, to having a great life together. It was almost 2011 December. Uh, we were from a church event with my husband uh, and uh, our little girl, she was, she was three then. I was five months pregnant with our son, so we were from a church event on, and on our way home. Um, along the southern bypass, we, so we met with some uh, thugs or robbers you know, let me call them robbers. And, um, you know, they shot at us. You know, they shot at us because we were in a private car. James was driving the car and uh, they shot at him on the head and he died on the spot. Yeah, and, um, you know, a new life began for me, you know. When a spouse dies or when a loved one dies, uh, life changes, things are never the same again. Yeah, so James dies uh, immediately. You know, he did not have, we did not have time to take him to the hospital and, you know, by the time the police came, you know, he was breathing his last. Yes, and that began, it began a new journey for me and uh, the children. Unfortunately, he died young, you know, you know, not having realized his dreams, not having lived the kind of life he was envisioning for himself and his family. Um, yeah, but uh, we, in all things, we thank God and uh, we know that God is always there. You know, life does not turn out to be how we want it to be, but whichever way it turns out, God is always there for us to strengthen us, to, you know, to be with us and to hold our hands and to walk with us. Yeah, and that, that's exactly uh, what God has been to me all these years because um, uh, I've come to the place of strength. I'm, I'm so grateful for where I am right now. Uh, the clarity of my future that I have in Christ, you know, my dreams, my potentials, you know, and, uh, you know, just embracing life by myself and reconciled myself to the fact that he will never be part of me again and, uh, you know, embracing my children and, you know, living a day at a time and trusting God that the future is really good and as, as he promises us in his word. When you, lo when you lose a loved one and especially a spouse, there is such an emptiness that um, that is left you know and um, the part that they played the part that uh, he played in my life you know he wasn't there so life changes things are never the same again you've got to see how to move on without uh, without them you've got to see how to adjust to their absence uh, you've got to see how to take up the the responsibilities that he was you know he was doing yeah, you've just got to, and then you are in emotional trauma, you are broken, you're in pieces, you're, um, you know, for me when James left, there was a feeling of uh, confusion, you know, I felt lost, I felt disabled, I, I felt paralyzed, you know, you're in deep darkness, at times you do not know what to do, um, it, 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 it's, it's a tough place to be in, it's a tough place to be in, it's not a good place to be in, and uh, you just need God, you, you need the grace of God, you need uh, people there, you need uh, a great, a good support uh, system for you. You know, I was left with two children. My, f my firstborn was three then, and I was five months pregnant with our son. Yeah, so they were, you know, those are, that is, that, those are very small children. Yeah, those are very small children. Um, and you've got to, to walk the journey with them you know, at that tender age, because then, um, 
you know, she was a little bit, of course she was understanding that daddy is no longer here with us, but, you know, she doesn't understand the depth of, of death and the impact, you know, that it, that it has or it had on her. Yeah, but you've got to walk uh, the journey for yourself and for the children, especially if you have very young children. Yeah, so, yeah, four months down the line, I had um, my boy, my son. Yes, and it's, it's been, it, it was a tough journey initially, but it, with, as time goes on, you heal, you become better. And um, a time comes when you, you, are, you are, you know, you're strong enough to embrace the journey on your own and, you know, to, to just move on with your life. After losing her husband, Mary was left pregnant with a young child. Her journey of healing and recovery started. It's, it's not easy at all. And healing is not a one-day event, a one-year event. Healing takes time. It takes, it's a journey, you know. Healing is a process. It's a journey. And uh, it's a journey that you've got to accept and desire to heal. Because if you do not uh, want or if you do not want or desire to heal, then you can get stuck at a, a particular place or at a particular event. And you don't want that to happen with your life. So healing is very important uh, uh, because you, 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 you've got to be whole for you to move on with your life, for you to just live your life. You can't live your life broken. You can't live your life in tears. You can't live your life in grief. You can't live your life in sorrow. You've got to allow healing because when you heal, then you, you, you are whole. And when you're whole, you can live, you can be productive with your life. You can, be, you can flourish, you can prosper in whichever area that uh, God has placed you in. So healing is a journey. It's a process. It's not easy. And there are so many factors and there are so many things that determine if, you, if you're to heal or not. And one of the things I always say for me, I had to learn how to forgive. Uh, for, for me to heal because um, being a widow in our society is not easy. You're rejected, you're abandoned, and you can find yourself at a place where you're bitter, you're angry with people, you're angry with the society. And when you, when you get bitter, when you get unforgiving, angry, hate, hateful, then you get stuck in the very moment that you need to get yourself out of. You get stuck in the very darkness that you need to get your life out of. So I, I found myself having to deal with some things like, uh, bitterness, being angry with people and wondering why did people abandon me when I needed them most? Why doesn't the society seem to, um, you know, to look down on women like me, yet it's not our will that, you know, our husbands uh, die. And so um, I had to forgive and I had to let go, I had to release anyone that I was holding in my heart for me to come to the place of healing. Believe you me, when you're carrying people in your heart, when you're bitter, when you're unforgiving, you can never heal you will never heal because it keeps you at the very place you know and you need to get out of that place and and move you know uh, so um i had to to forgive people secondly you've got to allow god into your wound you've got to allow god into your, your pain you've got to allow him into your um into your darkness if you don't you don't allow god then um you get stuck because god has got the power to get you out he's got the ability to heal your heart to comfort he says i will comfort zion i will give her beautiful ashes god delights when we allow him into our pain into our sorrow into our darkness and he he, he takes over and heals us and shows us uh, uh, uh the light that is got for us uh tomorrow or in our future and for me that was probably easy because I already had a relationship with God. So I wasn't trying to find God in my darkness. I already had him and he helped me walk the journey. He helped heal the wound. It wasn't easy. I mean, losing my husband was not easy. I was only five years married. There is so much that we had, you know, planned. You know, we had dreams that we had together. Uh, when, when your spouse dies, it's like all the dreams you had with him also die. So I had to allow God into my life, come and heal me, come and walk uh, the journey with me. That was not hard because, to be very honest with you, um, my pain found me at a place where I just needed God. And I'm told there are people that get bitter at God, get angry at God when they are in darkness. 
for me that did not happen and I always say that that was my greatest miracle that uh, I ran to God in my moment of pain because I just didn't know how to handle it uh, uh, apart from without him and uh, it was so intense that I knew if I don't get God involved it could destroy my life I wanted to, I needed to be sane for my children I needed to be sober I needed to be strong you know I needed to be at the place of um of of, of hope you know, because I had responsibility, I had children to take care of, and I also needed to keep my mind sober and sane, and then that meant telling God, come and take over. I don't know what to do. Um, I, I, I don't know how to get off this, I don't know how to get off this situation. I need you. And God was so gracious because God has been there every day of my life. He has wiped my tears. He has, you know, he has healed my broken heart. He has mended the wound, and I can say that um, I'm, I'm, I'm whole, you know, and, uh, you know, I've embraced the life that he has for me and looking forward to the future that he has for me. So healing is a journey. Healing is a process. Um, there are moments it will be good. You know, there are days that I was really good, you know, but there are days it would just get terrible. I mean, the heaviness, you know, the tears. And it would almost get me back, you know, to where I've come from. So you move five steps forward and, and, and you find yourself ten steps backward. <laughs> yes, but all in all, as, as, as you embrace God and as you allow him into your life, he walks with you. It's not an easy journey. It takes a lot of time. You've got to be, you've got to, um, you've got to make the bold decision and you take steps of faith that I've got to get out of here. I remember th there are moments I just wanted to get out of that, you know, that, that, that pain. It would be so intense. I just wandered out and I'm so grateful that I'm no longer there, that I've healed and I'm strong now. Yeah, we followed up with the police and um, it, it wasn't really promising. Uh, they just told us that uh, they shoot a lot of uh, robbers along the southern bypass, so most likely those guys have, have been uh, shot at or something like that. They are not there. So uh, for me, I didn't have the strength to really follow it up. Remember, I was pregnant and I was in pain. I, I just didn't have the strength to follow the whole, um, you know, the whole issue up, so I just let it. I just let it. After all, my husband was uh, long dead. Uh, my husband was dead, so I, I didn't know how getting them or, you know, would help me. So I just let it, but I had to forgive them. I had to forgive them on my behalf and on, and on behalf of my children. In this journey, Mary was not alone. Family and friends supported her and helped her heal. With time, Mary was able to heal and forgive the robbers who ended her husband's life. The support is very important, and especially if, if you're in grief, if you're in deep pain. Uh, remember, there are, there are people that have done weird things to themselves because of lack of support. People get depression, people have committed suicide, people have, you know, gotten into the bitterness, gotten bitter, angry at life. Um, I would say that um, I, I had support, you know, I had friends, I had family that were there for me. I can't say that everybody left. Of course, there are those that left, you know, but uh, there are family was there and I'm so grateful for family and a few friends uh, people were there and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that because then um, I had always somebody to check on me somebody to visit you know when I gave birth to my to, to my to my boy there was somebody to check on us and somebody to to visit and see how everything is going on yeah so um, I had support and that was also very key to my healing yeah it might not really be the church, but just uh, one or two members, you know, um, that were there, you know, because it's important people visit, it's important people call, you know, people find out how you're doing, and people, somebody just avails themselves to walk with you the journey, and uh, somebody to just um, allow you to marry, you can call anytime, you can always, you can, you can, anytime you want somebody to talk to, you can call me, you know, if you want somebody to visit, you can call me. Yeah, I can say that I had such a person from the church who allowed me to, 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 to reach out, you know, to them in case of any need, in case um, I just feel I need somebody for me and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful.
Finances becomes one of the main areas that is really affected when your husband passes on and you have children to take care of, you have uh, bills to pay, you have, um, you love, you have literally your, your life to run that takes uh, money. Um, uh, you, take, you use the savings that you had and of course you've got to see how to, 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 to arise and do something with, with yourself. And of course for me I said that I had a supportive family. So, you know, they stepped in even financially. Yes, they stepped in even financially. Along the way, Mary discovered her ability to write and she pulled down the story of her life in a book. I started writing my book not as a book but just writing down my journey, my feelings, my everyday feelings, my everyday walk with God after, you know, the death of my husband, you know. And with time I came to realize I, I, there was so much I'd put down that uh, probably would help somebody. And also I, I came to realize that I'd been walking a journey. There, there, I could say there were, there were steps, you know, there was progress in how, in how far I had come. And um, I felt just to put down my journey on a book to help somebody who tomorrow probably uh, would be walking a similar journey and would have problems coming out of it. You know, because it's very easy to get stuck in pain. It's very easy to, to not know how to move forward. Because I always say that pain has got the ability to destroy your life if you let it. Pain can disable you forever if, if, if you do not know how, if you don't have the wisdom on how to handle that season. Because it's a season and God intends it to be a season, to just be a face of your life. That you don't live forever in pain, in, in grief, in, in, in tears, in sorrow. Yeah, so um, I began writing the, the book in 2014. That was three years after James's death. Yeah, and it took me a while, several years to write it and I'm so grateful that uh, the book is finally out. And uh, for the many people that have gotten the book, they, they, they feel that uh, it's helped them in their various journeys. Not only the loss of a spouse, but any other pain, you know, because pain is similar, you know, it disables in the same way. Whether it's a loss of a husband or a, a brokenness or a divorce or whatever, you know, um, could be the, 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 the factors that brought the pain could be different, but I think we need to just use the same mechanisms, not to get stuck in the pain and to get out of the pain. So I, I started writing this book in 2014, and last year it was published, and I'm, I'm really grateful. Uh, Beauty Beyond the Pain, my, my journey and my testimony of getting through the death of my husband, um, you know, um, how, I've, how, uh, how I avoided getting stuck in a moment and how I allowed God into my life to come and walk me through the journey, how I had to, to, to filter my life, not through the lens of, of, of the pain, but through the lens of the Word of God, through the lens of faith, to, uh, to enable me to be strong and also embrace that which God has for my life. Writing this book, first and foremost, was a journey. And it also helped me heal uh, faster. And secondly, it also ushered me to the world of writing. I just never thought I could write. But uh, after writing this book, many more are coming. You know, many more are coming. I have one that uh, I'm trusting God will publish by the end of this year too. And others, you know, are on the way. So I'm grateful because it ushered me to the world of writing. And uh, secondly, um, it's the phone calls that I receive from people you know, that I've read the book, telling me, Mary, this book has really helped me. I was stuck in my pain. Um, I remember I received a, a call from a lady who told me that she was widowed when she was 30 years old. And she was pregnant when the, wife, when the husband died. And because of the, the stress, you know, of, of the loss of the husband, she also lost the pregnancy. And now she's 50 years old, and uh, she had never moved on till she read my book. And she told me, Mary, I was stuck for 20 years, you know, because my husband died, I was 30 years. I'm now 50. I was stuck in widowhood. But after reading your book and hearing your testimony, I have decided to move on with my life, you know. And, and, and you know, that, that really touched me because for, it's, it's, not, it's not a good place. To, you know, we, 
that pain of the loss of a husband is not a place you want to live in for 20 years. Because I'm imagining you, you're crying for 20 years, you're broken for 20 years, but uh, she told me that uh, somebody gave her this, bought for her this book, and uh, after, after 20 years, now she's ready to put down the garments of widowhood and embrace whatever life God has for her. And I told her that God has a good plan for your life. Don't allow yourself to be defined by a moment. You know, your husband is gone, you've got a right, you know, from even the word of God to marry again if need be. And as a child of God, he has freed you from pain and from sorrow. Bible says he will give us beautiful ashes and strength, you know. Um, and so it, 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 it gives me uh, fulfillment when somebody tells me that uh, the book has been a blessing to them and the book has impacted their lives in such a way that their lives have, have been changed and transformed. Her advice to people might have lost a spouse and still living in the dark world of bitterness and unforgiveness. I always say that uh, when you wear sunglasses everything is filtered on the lens of the sunglasses and somehow things appear darker on the other side of the sunglasses and same with pain. If you filter your life through the pain or through the challenge, through the affliction, through the trial that you're going through, life will appear da more darker than it is. Life will appear impossible. Life will appear hopeless. I advise people if you're going through pain, a challenge, an affliction, a trial uh, that, you're, and, uh, that you're going through, uh, try to, uh, to filter, to take in the lens of faith, the lens of the word of God. And God says that, for I know the plans I have for you, to give you a hope and a future. When you put on that lens and you filter everything through the lens of, I know the plans that, that I have for you, they are wonderful plans, then you are able to arise more quickly and to let go of your pain and to take uh, steps of faith towards uh, the future that God has for you. At times it's not easy, you know, because uh, pain is pain, you know. It may not be easy, it, 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 it's tough at times, but... Uh, you have no other option. If you don't want to get stuck, if you don't want to remain there for the rest of your life, there is no other option but to take the lens of faith and trust God and believe God and arise. You know, the word of God encourages us to arise. Arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have, have kept you. You've got to arise at some point of your life. You've got to say that I will not tell my story the same way forever. I've got, I mean, my story has got to change. I've got to, to tell my story from the place of hope, from the place of victory, from the place of triumph. And for, 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 for that narrative to change, then you've got to arise. You've got to lay the pain down. You've got to, to decide that uh, this trial is not going to define me. This trial is not going to be part of my life forever. We have been empowered by God. The grace is sufficient for us to take the necessary steps and to move on to the life that God has for us. This, uh, the book is in Kenswick Bookshop, that is in uh, uh, CBD, Nairobi CBD, and uh, also you can, anyone that wants the book can call me, yeah, for a copy of the book. But uh, if you go to Kenswick, it's there. How unforgiveness hinders the blessing from getting into your life. You know, God has already, re already released the blessing, but because of unforgiveness and bitterness, it just, it's, it's like uh, the pipe that is bringing the blessing, you clog it with your bitterness and uh, with, with unforgiveness. If we would learn how to forgive and how to let go, then we come to the place of freedom. And when you're in the place of freedom, then you, it's like you allow God then to work whatever way he wants to work in your life, to give you anything you want for your life. When I'm to, when any time I talk about bitterness, I always refer to Joseph. If you if, if you remember when the brothers came over, Joseph knew knew them, but they did not know him. And Joseph was in a place where he could have retaliated in a very fierce way if he wanted. He was the prime minister. There was so much power and authority. I mean, he could have put those guys inside or just executed them. But when we look at scriptures, Joseph had walked the journey and learned how to be to forgive how to let go when he receives them he receives them with so much tenderness and so much love there was no revenge there was no you know hitting back you know there was only love and i believe sometimes i believe that joseph was entrusted with what he had then in egypt by god because god saw a man that was forgiving 
not hateful, not revengeful, but he saw a man because he needed to be at that place. You know, the brothers had to come over, buy food, and, and he had to prepare to receive them now to come and dwell in Egypt for 430 years. Yeah, so uh, bitterness hinders so much for, uh, out of our lives, and especially God's blessing. If you're a, child, if you're a born again Christian, you cannot be a Christian and be bitter. Remember, we, we forgive because we have been forgiven. The same measure we have received from the Lord, we give. And that's why even in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us, you know, forgive us as we forgive others. So forgiveness is, is very key for a Christian. You cannot say that you're a Christian and are, are bitter, are angry. It's never easy, but you ask God to give you the strength and the grace to forgive. <laughs> you know, not easy. And I've, uh, one thing, what I do is that if somebody hurts me and I want to let go very fast, uh, I pray for them. Yeah. Because the more I pray for you, the more I embrace you. You can never pray for somebody that you're angry at. You can never. Just try it. It doesn't work. Anytime you open your mouth, you just don't want. But as you, you, you pray for them, then your heart slowly melts and your heart softens and gets tender towards them. And finally, you've forgiven them. Join us next week, same time, for another great testimony here on Testify.